One month after Pitit Zavan, people were evacuated to grammar school. They are about to move again into temporary housing. President Savre cancels an independent reception at the State House in solidarity with post Erica recovery efforts and a police sergeant released on bail after he was charged for unlawfully shooting in 2013. I am Idona Jabaptis with the Channel 5 News. Details after this. There's a place in Portsmouth that's mellow. The products and services are just mellow. Located on Harbour Lane in Portsmouth, next to the St. John's School, it's Milo's Bakery. Milo's Bakery offers a wide variety of tasty pastries and breads for your satisfaction. Baked fresh and soft. So come to Milo's for your tasty pastries. Open from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Monday to Saturday and from 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. on Sundays. Call 445-4044 today. We should be sleeping Live wider awake with Beautyrest, the only mattress that combines the support of legendary Beautyrest pocketed coil technology with the comfort of air cool memory foam. Beautyrest, it's you fully charged. Available exclusively at Quartz. Quartz, bringing value home. National Cooperative Credit Union is the way to go. Get up to $8,000 right now with a no for no loan. Go to our website at nccudominica.com for details and apply for a no for no loan at any NCCU branch to get your cash right now. Leader in manufacturing for the cutting professional, Makita's very own diamond blades provide maximum efficiency for coring, cutting, and polishing all types of masonry. Another good product put out again by Makita. Longer life, durability, optimum performance. Makita diamond blades provide a powerful edge that lasts. Nothing nicer than having a good blade. Go beyond the ordinary. Go with Makita. First up, come Tuesday, Pete Zavan evacuees at the Dominica Grammar School will move on to temporary locations provided by government. This school has been used as the main shelter for the people of Pete Zavan since they voluntarily evacuated their homes immediately after Storm Erica. Majority of them have left the school to board at the homes of friends and family. Chairman of the Pete Zavan Village Council, Edward Thomas, is one of about 97 people who are still being housed at the grammar school. As a matter of fact, we are moving out of here tomorrow. Okay. Yes. All... Yes, the entire population of the grammar school. We are moving out. And I mean, there's no one place that could hold all of us, you know. So, I mean, we are going to different locations. Yeah, we, some of us will go to Springfield, especially the larger families, you know, with the children. Since in, in the area of Roseau, it's like you, with all these kids, you need somewhere, if I hear or something, where they could, you know, play or, you know, you can have the kids locked up in a house for the entire day, you know. Okay. Yes, so we have the um, Springfield area for the larger families, and we have St. Saint, um, Saint Amy's, and... Um, the Kens and Tony's place and Mr. Clint's guest house. Meantime, a special committee of Pitit Savan people has been discussing with government the way forward on identifying lands for their long term relocation. We have had several meetings, you know, several discussions, and it's all about like having the people involved, you know, in the decision making as to where we want to go. You know, you can't just like send people to places they don't like, you know, and seeing that. Um, 
Petit Savan community is a, is a farming community, fishing community, so we have to take into consideration the livelihood of the people. So, um, yeah, they, I mean, there are several options, you know, put on the table. Like, um, we have places like Warner, uh, places like Sultan, Bellevue, um, Mopo, Makaton area, Grandbay, Bordeaux area. Yeah, so these are the places, other places we have in mind to relocate the people. Thomas says both the committee and the government agree on the proposed locations. The committee we relate to the people whatever happens at the, at the, at the, at the meetings, you know. So, so yeah, it's, um, it's like the committee is made up of, of, of the people from BD7, you know, especially the people who knows, you know, knows the whereabouts of the people, how the people live and stuff like that. So, and the most interesting thing is I, um, the same areas the government proposes is the same areas we the people propose. So it's like, you know, it's not much of a problem now. Currently, 4th and 5th form students of DGS are attending classes at the new wing of the school. They make up just about 300 students of the school. DGS has a population of over 500 students. Ministry of Education will advise when the remainder of DGS students can return to school. In related news, as Petit Savan people continue to make arrangements for their accommodation, a Channel 5 News team visited the community on Saturday and this is what they found. Even on the way to Grand Bay, the destruction caused by the storm is very evident. We encountered our first hurdle when we got to the Grand Bay playing field. The bridge there was completely gone, so we took a much longer alternative route. The hard work of the Public Works Department was apparent with the steel soft soil pushed to the side as we made our way up the muddy road. This is as far as vehicles can go on the way to Petit Savan. The rest of the way, persons must hike or walk if they are to reach their homes. As you can see behind me, persons have already begun carrying their belongings from their homes to their new locations. People with plans to go into the village from the distillery side had to trek a makeshift shortcut around the excavator, clearing mud in that area. We met community members of all ages carrying bags, buckets and other valuables from their homes to the pickup points. I followed the track of the community members and found that a lot of the soil was still muddy and very loose. After getting stuck in the mud a few times, the small stream left from the once thunderous river was where I washed off my feet. Along the way, we met several people whose only focus was getting their belongings out of that community. This is the path persons visiting the community must now take to get to one part of Petit Zavan. After a 10 minute hike over fallen and washed down trees, galvanage, broken poles and wires, this is the first clearing into another part of the community. This is the location of the church which was crushed by the current boulder you are looking at. Some homes still appear to be unaffected while others obviously felt the brunt of the landslides. A group traveling out of the community who didn't wish to speak on camera expressed that even after seeing what was left of their community, they still wish to return home. A lot of the people did not want to speak but they did express their intentions to return home as soon as it is possible. We met a few people along the way who said that they never left Petit Savan and they had no intentions to. I am Lorraine Graham Carter reporting for Channel 5 News. More top stories. A police sergeant with over 20 years in the police force has been charged for unlawfully shooting a Woodford Hill man in 2013. On Monday, Sergeant Philbert Bertrand appeared before a Rosso Magistrate Court to be read his charge of shooting with intent to cause grievous bodily harm to Kelvin Collier. The weapon used was an M16 assault rifle. 
Bail was opened to Bertrand in the sum of $15,000 and was granted after his brother stood as surety for him. In 2015, the victim, Collier, who was represented by attorney David Bruni, was awarded damages and loss of earning capacity of $133,780 after filing a lawsuit against the attorney general and Sergeant Bertrand. The facts of the case, as filed in a statement by Collier, are that in November 2013, Collier was leaning on a concrete column holding a cutlass in his hand in the area of his parents' home when he observed one of two police officers walking towards the house. Collier heard Bertrand said, look him. Bertrand said to Collier, you I come for. Collier responded, if it is me, all you come for, look me. Bertrand reportedly cranked the M16 assault rifle at Collier, who was still leaning against the exposed concrete column. The bullet struck Collier in his stomach. Collier was transported by the two officers to the Marigot Hospital on a police pickup van and then transferred to the Princess Margaret Hospital where he remained for 12 days. In her judgment on the matter, Master of the High Court, Agnes Akti, stated that there was no evidence of provocation or aggression on the part of the claimant Collier, neither was there any evidence that the officers' lives were endangered to justify the use of such force. On the education scene, plans are afoot to have the new Newtown Primary School prepared at the soonest. Classes for the Newtown Primary School have been housed downstairs of the Newtown Catholic Church building and the Bath Estate campus of the Dominica State College, while a new school building was being constructed at the existing school site. Construction of the $6.8 million school building began in 2013. The project was estimated to be completed in 14 months. Um, the Wednesday before the storm, we had a meeting with the Ministry of Education officials, the PT executive and teachers. And at that meeting, the decision was taken based on the information that we had that uh, school, we will move to, to um, Newtown in our new school building sometime in January of 2016. Um, and um, all plans are afoot to have us move to that section uh, in January. As a matter of fact, the, the, there is even uh, some, uh, some thought that uh, we might go there earlier um, because uh, a, lot, a lot of demand for this building that we are now occupying. Um, we know that uh, a number of schools in and around the area have been damaged and there's a, a, a space problem and they're looking to see how quickly that they can have the school ready for us so that we can make space for schools who haven't got that convenience. The three-story building with 14 classrooms is a gift from the government of the People's Republic of China to the government of Dominica. Meantime, the Ministry of Education will put a shift system in place at the Bath Estate campus to accommodate primary school students from Petit Sivan. As of next month, and maybe as early as uh, the fifth, so we think in probably next week, Monday, uh, the Petit Sivan school We'll be here and uh, we'll be sharing the building. We will go, we will go from uh, uh, 8 to 12.30 and the pizza fan will come in from 1 o'clock to, to 5 o'clock. Mm -hmm. yeah. We have already decided that we can um, stretch the hours a little more. Um, Pitti Savan, as far as I understand, is not a very large school and we'll not be using all the classes that we are using here. And so some of the rooms will be empty and some of the teachers have already expressed interest in doing some extra classes with the children uh, on their own time. Taxi operators who were affected by the passage of Tropical Storm Erica may receive assistance from the Combined Taxi Incorporated. This is one of the major topics up for discussion by the new executive body of the Combined Taxi Inc. On Thursday, 24th September, the numerous taxi associations on island gathered to hold elections at the annual general meeting. President of the Combined Taxi Inc. says taxi drivers were among those negatively impacted by the tropical storm. Um, we have a few bus drivers who have lost their vehicles, especially in the Petit Savan and in the Pichne area. And um, we have some bus drivers who have their vehicles locked in because of, of road access into the communities um, of Bodikan Delis and um, Petit Savan and, and, and Bakatel, some of those areas, um, vehicles are locked in. The new executive will be in place for the next year and will look after the affairs of the taxi associations around the country. But however, combined may not be able to help to replace your vehicle, 
but as the new president, I raised the issue at the annual general meeting. Um, why not make some stipend available to the taxi driver to allow him to be able to meet his basic day-to-day -day commitments? So that, that is something we will look at as the new board and see if the um, resources allow us to do such. Well, we have Curtis Labassi as the vice president. We have Marshall Durand re-elected to the post of secretary. We have Luis Romain newly elected to the post of assistant secretary treasurer. And we have um, Oris Campbell re-elected treasurer. And we have Renald Alcindor elected to the post of the public relations officer and yours truly, Philip Gist, as the new president. Dominica's independence cultural activities have also been negatively impacted by the passage of the tropical storm. Gist notes that the reduced number of independence activities will hurt taxi drivers. It's good to affect the drivers who do business during transportation of various groups from one point to another. So at the end of the, of the independence season, with all of that activity, you, um, after the guy does his day at the, at, the, at, the, at the port, he's now able to do, apply a trip for government and at the end of it get, get, get some resources. So we believe that's going to affect the drivers directly and, and um, so maybe we would, we would maybe find a way to see how we can cushion them and to make them understand that because of Erica, but it's going to affect the drivers definitely. You're watching Channel 5 News. Stay tuned for more. At Quartz, it's the biggest mattress clearance event of the year. We're making room for all new models. So, for a limited time, purchase any mattress, base, or divan, and get a second one, half price. Everything must go. So, head down to Quartz now and take advantage of the biggest mattress clearance event of the year with nothing down and nothing to pay for 90 days. Only at Quartz. Quartz, bringing value home. Get serious. Get bop. Babe, for the next three months, make sure you use your NBD credit card. Okay, why? Because you can get a chance to win a trip for the two of us to go to Matney, Guadeloupe, or St. Lucia. A trip for two? Cool! But we need spending money. NBD will handle that. The trip plus $1,500 spending money. Nice! So anybody can win? New and existing personal credit card customers. So you see this long book list we have? And those new school shoes, uniforms, and things we have to buy? We'll use our NBD credit card. Use your NBD credit card for purchases from now till September 30th and get a chance to win a to trip win, for two to, to Guadeloupe, Martinique, or St. Lucia, plus $1,500 cash. Yeah. Don't have an NBD credit card? Sign up today. Conditions apply. NBD, your partner, your bank. Your bank, your bank. Brock Lesnar's Go To Hell Tour ends in Los Angeles against the most formidable opponent in WWE history. The Undertaker in the most formidable match ever. Hell in a set. Thanks for staying with us. Another significant event which takes place during the independence is cancelled. The Office of the President has informed that the President's Independence Reception, held annually on November 3rd, has been cancelled. A statement from the President's Office stated that considering the significant loss of lives and severe infrastructural damage suffered as a result of the flooding and landslides caused by the heavy rains of Tropical Storm Erica, His Excellency the President has taken the decision to cancel the customary event. In expressing sympathies to those who suffered losses, His Excellency Charles Savre said in the statement that we will need the continued support of our overseas nationals, our OECS and CARICOM brothers and sisters, and the international community in the task of reconstruction. President Savre has called on Dominicans at home and abroad to continue to concentrate their efforts in helping to rebuild the country. 
St. Kitts Prime Minister Timothy Harris wants CARICOM to come up with a strategy to reduce challenges such as an existing high import bill facing the region. Dr. Harris, who recently visited Dominica, told the local media that he believes the CARICOM Secretariat ought to make an added effort to sell the message of regional integration. He hopes this will propel member states to realize they need to work together to overcome their challenges, one of them being a high import bill. In the context of a region that says that we are fertile lands, we should have been able to satisfy much more of the food consumption needs of the region in particular. For us to be able to do that, we have to move beyond the geography of each island to see the region really as a single space. So Dominica with vast land mass compared to Senkits can provide agricultural land space in a sufficient quantity to make it a commercial viable enterprise. To engage, for example, not just in the production of primary crops, vegetables and fruits, but also to get involved in agro-processing. CARICOM has an agreement establishing a single market and economy where among its objectives is achieving competitive production, leading to greater variety and quantity of products and services to trade with other countries. And those with the resources then in other islands can become investors and partners in that development. I think it's those kinds of collaborative effort that the people of the region have to see to get more confidence that the regional effort is working. We have to be able within our region to pull labor, pull capital, pull resources from those states in which they are in excess to those where they are required. But we need a lot more work and the integration movement. The Dominica Association of Persons Living with Disabilities has announced a $500,000 project which will complete their multi-purpose development center. On Friday, the government and people of Japan handed over the third phase of the multi-purpose development center of the DAPD. Handed over houses a dormitory funded by the Embassy of Japan in Trinidad and Tobago in the sum of over 36,000 U.S. dollars. The facility includes not only the physical structure, but also equipment and, and appliances that makes it ready to be used immediately. Work on this phase of our multi-purpose development center, which is the dormitory, began in earnest in 2012 when a few officials from Japan visited Dominica to, as they put it, scout for ideas, scout for projects. The handover forms part of Japan's grant assistance for the Grassroots Human Security Project. Executive Director of the DAPD, Nathalie Murphy, announced that Phase 4 of the project will bring to completion the development center. And the final phase will be an auditorium, which we are going to have on the upper, um, uh, as a first floor. Yeah, and so um, the, that this is going to be funded by the Caribbean Development Bank Basic Needs Trust Fund in um, BNT, as part of BNTF7. Murphy says the funds for the construction of the auditorium have already been secured. So this auditorium we are going to use when we have our annual general meetings because sometimes it's difficult to get accessible um, facilities to to hold our, our meetings, so we are going to have that and we're going to use it as well as an income generating facility, that and the dormitory, because we hope to have um, theatrical presentations, if a person is looking for a facility to hold a wedding reception, if groups want to have the meetings and a workshop and so on, that will be rented off and the dormitory as well. The DAPD executive director says she hopes that the additional facilities will assist in the long-term maintenance of their programs. The Dominica Community High School is another institution on island to benefit from a grassroots program sponsored by the government of Japan. At a signing ceremony on Friday, the Community High School received a grant for a renovation project on its compound. Principal of the DCHS says the grant is timely as the renovation project will create a better environment for students. The journey has just begun. 
the uphill task will start soon. I know sometimes we may get nervous, we may get angry, but let us look at the objective and let us look at the prize. The prize is that we want our roof to be covered so we can encourage quality education. The environment for education is so very important, not only for the students, for the teachers. The teachers working condition. This grant displays the Japanese government's commitment to assisting Dominica's development efforts. The government and people of Japan have always been supportive of Dominica, and we know that this support will continue long into the future. So we again want to express our gratitude for providing to the school the funding necessary for the replacement of the school's roof and for the upgrading of their solar electrical system. The process leading to today started long before Tropical Storm Erica, and we are happy to know that the proposal was approved and ready for implementation, especially at this time when resources are greatly stretched. And we know for a fact that Japan too has had to grapple with the devastation caused by natural disasters such as tsunamis and earthquakes. But this has not hindered Japan from reaching out to us, countries like ours. The grant funding forms part of several contributions to the Dominican society from the government of Japan. The value of the grant is 89,988 US dollars. In 2011, this school began its transition to renewable energy with the installation of 25 solar panels, which to date are fully operational and have turned out to be a very beneficial to the school's daily functions. With the grant funding received today, the Dominica Community High School will seek to further improve the stability of these solar panels by replacing the existing roof structure on which they are housed. This uh, roof replacement will also directly benefit the students and teachers of the school by providing a more secure and resilient cover to the building, especially in the times of adverse weather conditions. The Dominica Community High School was applauded for its pioneering efforts in the use of sustainable energy on a school compound. This disaster is another example of increasing number of extreme weather uh, we are experiencing all over the world. That's why a project which enhances the use of sustainable energy is so timely and worthwhile. Your high school, upon completion of this project, will act as a beacon which will continue to tell us all about the importance of sustainable energy. Andrea Louis, Channel 5 News. And finally, sky gazers in Dominica had a treat on Sunday night as many stayed awake to witness the rare combined blood moon and eclipse. The rare total eclipse of a super full moon was visible from most parts of North and South America, Europe, West Asia, and parts of Africa. The supermoon occurs when the moon is closest to the Earth. This uncommon occurrence only happened five times during the 1900s. The term blood moon has been used in recent times because of the reddish hue the eclipsed moon takes on when in totality. There were four eclipses this year, the minimum number of eclipses in a calendar year. This eclipse is a lost eclipse for 2015. The next total eclipse of a super full moon is predicted to be on 8th October, 2033. Sports is next with Andrea Louis. In sports, efforts were made by the West Indies Cricket Board, WICB, and the University of the West Indies, UWE, to raise a targeted $1 million US dollars for Dominica on the weekend. Saturday's rally round the Dominica charity match saw an estimated 5,000 persons present at the game. The celebrity athletes at the match kept the crowd entertained as they played their part in aid of Dominica's relief efforts.
In football, the young boys of Grand Four emerged victorious over their rivals, Commerce Park, after closing the games 2-1 on Sunday. Captain of the winning team attributes their victory to hard work, preparation and the support from fans. Very, very exciting win. First victory we got since we played the league. No, not really. We didn't, since before we've been training hard, 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 hard and we never stopped. So, training pay off till today then. There are all our fans that support them. So, it wasn't too hard for us. Meantime, Member of Parliament and sponsor of the RC Doctors Football League congratulated the players and pledged his continued support to his constituency. I am lucky to have a winning team for my constituency, being the Grand Four team. I will continue to support football in my constituency and also in the South East. Celebrations continued as players were rewarded for their valiant efforts in the sport and the Young Boys team was declared champions of the league. Young Four, Young Boys team! And the Kubuli Chebe Sao Domino League on Sunday saw homeboys with 82 doors, 3 points, Babi 71 doors, 3 points, and Melvinas 69 doors, 1 point in Game 1. Game 2 culminated with Green City having 83 doors, 3 points, Golden Arms 67 doors, 1 point, Simple 67 doors, 2 points, and Unbearable 73 doors, 1 point. In the second match, Martian had 84 doors, 3 points, Melvinas 62 doors, 1, 2 points, and Call for Duty 59 doors, 1 point in Game 1. Game 2 saw Attackers with 78 doors, 3 points, Golden Arms 74 doors, 2 points, and Giants 71 doors, 1 point. And finally, in Game 3, Babi had 82 doors, 3 points, Simple 77 doors, 2 points, and 007 72 doors, 1 point. That's all the time we have for sports. Join us next time. A tropical wave located in the central tropical Atlantic is expected in the area by the weekend. The weather report is next. Hello, good evening. Welcome to tonight's weather broadcast. I will be your presenter for this evening, Farah Rock Career. Let's take a look now at some earlier satellite imagery and what it showed is this area of convection here associated with Tropical Depression 11, just northeast of Bahamas, but we also see some cloudiness over the Windward Islands and also Barbados. Let's take a look now at some earlier radar imagery and what it indicated is some shower activity again across the Windward islands and particularly the west coast of Barbados. Flash flooding was reported earlier this afternoon there. The weather tonight is expected to be partly cloudy with a few scattered showers. These conditions will persist into tomorrow with some afternoon showers expected. The marine conditions tomorrow will be slight to moderate and waves will be up to five feet. The weather for the next three days, occasional cloudiness with some scattered showers for the three-day period, also some warm conditions and also some light winds are expected for the three-day period. The weather conditions for the rest of the Caribbean tomorrow, weak and stable conditions will produce occasional cloudiness and some scattered showers across the island chain. The international city forecasts some beautiful sunny skies are expected in New York, London and Caracas and some thunderstorm activity expected in Miami and overcast skies with some rain in Beijing. Sunrise tomorrow will be at 5.55 a.m. and sunset at 5.57 p.m. Please remember we are in the hurricane season. For updated information on weather conditions, log on to our website at weather.gov.dm or call the weather hotline at 447-5555. Join us tomorrow evening for your next weather broadcast. Thank you. That's news, the headlines again. One month after Peter Savan, people were evacuated to grammar school. They are about to move again into temporary housing. 
President Savre cancels an independence reception at the State House in solidarity with post Erica recovery efforts, and a police sergeant released on bail after he was charged for unlawfully shooting in 2013. For past newscasts, visit us on YouTube at Marpin News. You can also contact us via email at news at marpin2k4.com. On behalf of the production team, I am Idona Jambakis. Thanks for watching. Join us again tomorrow.